All right, today's topic is slope and y-intercept, and hopefully by the end of this lesson, you will be able to say, I know what the slope and the y-intercept of a line are and how this information is related to the lines equation. So the title today is slope and y-intercept, and we're going to start off by making a table of values. Uh, graphing this line that I've given you the equation for, uh, here's our equation, y equals 2x plus 2 thirds x plus 5. And we're going to um, sub in values of x and figure out our values of y in that equation. Now, notice that we have two-thirds in front of there, so we've got a fraction. So just as a little reminder or a little note, if the coefficient of x is a fraction, the math is easier if you pick values of x that are multiples of the denominator. So our denominator in this case is 3, and I'm going to pick the 5 multiples of 3 that surround 0. Of course, I'm going to use 0 as one of those, so 4 multiples of 3 that surround 0. Negative 6, negative 3, 0, 3, and 6. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sub those values in for x and then just do the math and figure out what my values of y are. So I'm going to put take 2 thirds of negative 6 plus 5. And just to make the math easier in my head, I'm actually going to do the division first. I'm going to take this 6 and divide it by 3. 6 divided by 3 is 2. So now the math becomes 2 times negative 2 is negative 4 plus 5 is a positive 1. And so I have the point negative 6 comma 1. Now I'm going to stick in that negative 3. So I need to take 2 thirds of negative 3 and add 5 to it. Now, again, I'm going to do this division first. I'm going to do this 3 divided by 3 is actually 1. And so now my question becomes 2 times negative 1 is negative 2 plus 5 is positive 3. So I have the point negative 3, positive 3. Now, if I stick 0 into there, that's pretty easy because 2 thirds of 0 is still 0. And then when I add 5 to it, I get 5. So the point 0, 5 is on my line. And now I should be able to see a pattern. Looks like my y's are going up by 2. So the next value will be 7, and the value after that will be 9, giving me two more points, 3, 7, and 6, 9. Now let's put those on the graph, shall we? So they're on the graph, and we're going to take a line and go right through them. Um, like so. Okay, so there is our line. And now this uh, question asks us, what is the slope of the line? So I'm going to pick two points uh, to draw my triangle between. It doesn't matter which two points. I'm going to pick those two points. And we're going to calculate the rise and the run. Now the rise, of course, is 1, 2, 3, 4. And the run is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So my rise and my run, I've got 4 and 6. So if I use slope equals rise over run, and M stands for slope, slope equals rise over run, we get 4 over 6. But 4 over 6 can reduce. Um, 2 goes into both of them, so 4 divided by 2 is 2, and 6 divided by 2 is 3, so slope becomes 2 thirds. And we could have gotten that 2 thirds if I picked the smaller triangle here, this one here, then I would have had a rise of 2 and a run of 3, and I would have had 2 thirds right away. But it doesn't matter which two points we pick to figure out what the slope is. The next question asks us, uh, where does it cross the y-axis? Now, that's a pretty easy question. It crosses the y-axis right there, and that point happens to be 5. And it asks us, where have you seen these numbers before? Well, take a look. Here's 2 thirds, and here is 5. And so we've actually seen those numbers in the equation um, y equals 2 thirds x plus 5. In that, we had the slope 
and we also had the y-intercept. Now we're going to take a look at that a little bit more detailed uh, with some graphing software. So let's see if this is a coincidence or if this is going to turn out to be a rule. So we're going to go to the Desmos online graphing software and take a look at a couple more options. So if I go into Desmos, here's Desmos, and, and notice that I already have a line there. I can switch this line up a little bit. So let's have a look at it a little bit. Um, right now, we're just going to play with that last number. Uh, right now, it's crossing at 0, 3, uh, and notice that it's a 3 there. So let's put a 4 there. And now it crosses the y-intercept at 0, 4. Doesn't look like a coincidence. Let's put in minus 5. And take a look at where it crosses the x-axis down here at minus 5. So it crosses the y-axis at minus 5. So that's not looking like any kind of coincidence. Uh, let's take a look at the slope. Um, how about uh, we say 2 fifths. We've got 2 fifths x minus 5. Now I'm going to take a little screen capture of this so that we can actually uh, right on it and calculate it. So I'm going to pull that into my document. And the equation that we had graphed was 2 fifths x minus 5. Let's take a little screen cap of that as well. Uh, 2 fifths x minus 5 is the equation we had at that line. And we're going back to our lesson here. There we go. Okay, there is the line, and this is the equation that we typed in to get that line. Now, first of all, notice that it is passing through here at minus 5. And now we're going to draw on a triangle so that we can get this right angle in there. And it has a rise of 2 and a run of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. A run of 5. And remember that slope equals rise over run, which in this case is 2 fifths, which we saw up there. So where it crosses the x-axis, or where it crosses the y-axis, gives us the number that's all by itself, and the number in front of the x, that 2 fifths in this case, but any coefficient of the x, gives us the um, slope. And that is no coincidence. Here's the actual um, rule, if you will. Uh, the slope of a line is given by the symbol m, and the y-intercept is given by the symbol b. So in general, any line has an equation that is y equals mx plus b, where m is our slope, and b is the y-intercept. And I encourage you to uh, go on to the... Desmos online graphing software and type in a few yourself to convince you that that's what's happening. Now we're going to do a few different examples. Uh, what are the slope and the y-intercept of the following lines? So we just have to locate them. This is pretty easy. Uh, slope always goes with the x. So in this case it's 5. Now it goes with the x. It doesn't include the x. It's just the number that's in front of x. And the b is the number that's all by itself. In this case negative 10. Second example, m is the number that's with the x. In this case, negative 0 0.25. Notice it doesn't matter where the x comes in the equation, whether it comes first or whether it comes second. It's always the number that's with the x, and make sure you put the sign with it too. And b is the number that's all by itself. In this case, it is 11. And the last one, the slope, the m, is the number that's with the x, which is negative 7. And the b is the number all by itself. In this case, it's negative 11. Now, example number 2 says, write an equation for a line that has a slope of 6 and a y-intercept of 4. Well, we need to start off with y equals mx plus b. 
And we're just working backwards here. Now I know what the slope and the y-intercept are, and I have to stick them into the equation. I leave my y and my x in the equation because the equation tells us how y and x relate to each other. Uh, slope is the m. So I was told that this has a slope of 6. So where that m was, I'm going to put a 6. And b is the y-intercept. In this case, the y-intercept is given to us as 4, so that is instead of the b. So the equation is y equals 6x plus 4. Write the equation of the given line. Now we have to get slope and y-intercept from a graph. Y-intercept's pretty easy. This is the y-intercept here at negative 2. And the slope we need to do rise over run. So I have to find two spots on here. Here's another point. And we have to find the rise and the run. So the rise is 1 and the run is 1, 2, 3, 4, 4. And it's positive because it's going up. And so the equation of this line, y equals mx plus b is the general form. We need the x and the y still in there. The b, in this case, where it crosses the y-axis, is negative 2. And the slope is rise over run. So slope equals rise over run, which we took a look at here. The rise was 1 and the run was 4. So we put 1 quarter in there. Now we're going to go on to one last example here. Um, a plumber charges for his service according to the equation C equals 50 plus 30T, where C is the total cost of the bill and T is the time in hours it takes to complete the job. If we graph this relation, what would be the y-intercept and what does it represent? Well, having C equals 50T or 50 plus 30T, it doesn't matter if we use C or T, our C is like the Y and the T is what like the X. So that means that the Y intercept of this equation would cost would be that $50. So in this case, B equals 50. Now what does that represent? Well, if you remember back when we were doing rate of change and fixed cost and all that kind of stuff, this looks to me like the plumber charges $50 no matter how long he's there. If he's there for zero hours, he's still going to charge you $50. So that's for the service call. So the $50 is the fixed cost for the service call. It's the fixed cost. Now, how about the slope of this equation? Well, if the T stands for the X, then this in here is going to give us slope. So the slope of this equation is 30. And in this case, it's $30 for every hour that the plumber is there. So $30 an hour, this represents his unit rate. This represents unit rate. unit rate of change, slope as a rate of change. And there you go, that is our slope and our y-intercept.